Greetings friend, I'll show you how Simon Anthony solved this puzzle by Shy better than a computer and how you can too. Not only will I explain all Simon's tricks, tips, and strategies, I'll also include pause the video and what if moments that you need to watch to fully understand to solve that last one, most important. Click below if you want to give it a go and with that, it's solving time. So Simon starts out with some Snyder notation. So he notices there's only two places for a one here in block four, two places for a one in block nine, and then he moves on to the twos. And in case you're not familiar, Snyder notation, anytime a three by three block, there's only two possibilities for a candidate. You mark those, and in case you solve one of those cells, then you can immediately solve the other one for that candidate. But this is getting him clues. He's kind of testing to get some clues. He doesn't expect to get much early on because he heard this was a difficult puzzle and shy is known for having difficult break-ins on her puzzles okay after that he moves to the twos and he knows there's only two spots for two up here in block two and then two spots for two in block six hopefully you're seeing this you got the twos here in columns eight and nine and cutting across and so i'll just kind of move on through the marking the big point you're going to get here there's not much you can find with marking he moves on to after getting the twos down there in block seven he moves on to the threes up here in block four block three and the threes up in down in block eight he actually misses an opportunity to mark two threes here because of this three coming down not a big deal he'll get to that later all right on to the four down here in block seven block two uh, block four and this is interesting because what he notices is the fours are limited to columns two and three here in block seven and then because of this four cutting across the fours are limited to blocks two and three up here in, in block one and this is a common thing whenever you see this situation that means the fours are limited to column one only here in block four as it says fours cut across there's only two spots for four this is called a claiming pair and what it means is a four since it has to be somewhere in column one it can only be in block four a four can't be anywhere else in block four so he notices this claiming pair and he marks it that's a good good find by simon there uh, after that he also marks some fours over here in block six then he moves on to the fives and sees fives there in block two uh, down in block six and then he moves on to the eights he knows there's only two places for an eight here in block nine because this eight coming down and this eight cutting across it makes these a pointing pair so a pointing pair of eights is such that the eights have to be somewhere in block nine and they're limited to column seven so that means the eight can't be anywhere else outside of column seven except here in the block so that means eights can't be in these two spots anymore uh, after marking those eights he looks up here and goes okay well now the eights are limited to these two spots so he marks those eights in block three he's not seeing any obvious digits he kind of looks for the nines and doesn't get anything there and so now he's he's like oh dearie this is going to be horrible um and so he goes on a hunt and call it for weak squares and by that now simon's trying to test a grid this is what you do you come in here you come up empty nothing you can solve so now you're going to look for places where there's two three candidates mainly two candidates to buy by cells. those are the weak spots those are spots where if you can just figure out what one of those candidates are you'll start to get some solving so he starts here in block five and again block five block one and and block nine have to get your attention i think shy wanted that and so she put a bunch of restrictions there so he starts in block five and notices that that can just be uh three seven and eight so that's of interest there uh, but it's not quite the main reason and then he says okay where can i find some other buy value cells and he sees one up here in block one so he's starting to get a little warmer and he goes okay that can only be a four nine so that's of interest and since the, this is set up kind of symmetrical to down here in block nine you know kind of it has this like a swirl to it he looks down here and goes, I wonder if there's another value I sell. And there is. There's a 6, 9 here in row 7, column 8. And after finding that, he then goes over and says, I wonder if there's anything over here in block 7. And he does find a buy value cell. It's a 5, 9. And that's interesting, uh, but doesn't quite clue him in on what's going on. And then he kind of looks up here, sees not much here in block 3. Then he decides to kind of go, okay, there's, there's a lot feeding in the... Uh, block two here so he marks the seven eight nine and then he starts to look a little bit bigger picture and this is where he's starting to get really warm on what you need to do if you want to make a break in this puzzle he looks across rows one 
in rows nine, in row one and nine, he's like starting to look for X wings. And he's like, why do why would he do that? Well, here's the main thing that Simon notices. You have five candidates filled in up there in row one and in row nine, and they're in the same columns. All right, so we'll just highlight in purple. These are in the same column. So what that's going to clue you in is that there's the same four cells that are restricted. Other thing that, Cy, that Shai kind of does, that's a little bit of a tip off. She puts these in order, one, two, three, four, five. Whenever you see a setter do that, they're normally using those as kind of filler cells. And so she wanted to block in these cells up here in, in row one for a reason. But you'll also notice what is the missing candidates. You got one, two, three, four, five up here. What's the missing candidates from down here? You also have a seven and eight. So the six and nine are missing. Where now you want to see what kind of restrictions are the missing candidates playing onto these four empty cells of each row. And you'll notice a six is here and a nine is there. And so it puts a lot of pressure on these four cells, but it also has an indirect influence on these outside four cells. And this is where Simon starts getting on the right path. And if you want to solve more puzzles like this and receive exclusive content, check out the pinned comment below on how you can join the Smarty Party. Now, what Simon does, let's remove all these colors, is he starts poking around and sees, you know, what is going on. So then he ends up coming up here. He colors some other candidates, but the main thing is he looks, he goes, okay, where can the six be up here in row one? And he puts that in blue. And then he goes, okay, where can the six be down here in row nine? He puts that in blue. He actually keeps this blue here, even though there's a six right there. Um, it, it doesn't matter for the purposes of the solve, but I did want to point that out. Then he goes, okay, where can the nines be? And he starts coloring those spots here in rows one and nine in orange. He does that. Okay. He thinks it's got to be involved. And so I immediately started looking up here and looking for like an almost lock set. Uh, there is not an almost lock set that works. There's just not enough restriction to make it work or a restricted common candidate that work. But he then goes, okay, what kind of restrictions are we seeing along columns one and nine? Are there more restrictions? And the first thing he finds is he goes up here to row four, column nine. And he goes, hey, that can only be a six or a nine. Can't be a one, two, three, four, five, seven, or an eight. He colors that in red. It's like, that's interesting because six and nine are the candidates that we're looking for. And then he comes over here, he thinks about the symmetry, and he notices that this can only be a six or a nine. He colors that in red. He goes, okay, there's got to be something going on here. And sure enough, there is. And this reminds me of another puzzle I solved called. Fruit Loop by Jovial actually uses a 6-9 candidates in this way. I'll put a link to that at the end. You've got to check it out if you want to solve Sudoku like this even better. Okay, now Simon's getting to this idea. What is going on? If, you know, first of all, what's the relationship between the 6 and the 9? And he notices that a 6 or a 9 will block out that candidate from these two squares in rows one in row 1 and 9. And these two squares up here in column nine. And he goes, can they both be a six? And this is where you got to kind of do that deduction. And this is where the computer doesn't do the deduction. The computer goes and looks for these forcing chains. A forcing chain, in case you're wondering, is basically the computer just goes to one cell, picks a candidate, and sees that there's a contradiction. If there's a contradiction, it knows that cell can be eliminated. Not an easy way to solve Sudoku. It takes you hours to just pick cells like that and kind of work through. You don't want to do forcing chains. It's really nasty. But if you put a six in both these spots, what does that do now to this puzzle? Well, it eliminates a six from those areas. And then you'll notice is like, where could you put a six in row one and row nine? Well, now the six can only be in two spots. It could be here or it could be there. And you'll see that's a contradiction. And not even or, it's an and. It has to be in column six and row one, and it have to also be in column six and row nine. We can't have that. And then if you do the same thing with the nines, same problem, right? You're going to eliminate the nines from all these spots. And then the nine can only be in the same... Uh, 
the same column in rows one and nine. You'd have to put the nine only be able to go here in row one and only here in row nine. We know that would break the puzzle as well. So what can we deduce from that? What we can deduce is that one of these has to be a six and one of these has to be a nine. And this is beautiful logic. This is what Shy wants you to find. And Simon did a great job of finding it. And so what it means is now we can eliminate six and nine from every cell that sees those two red cells. And so Simon color those in yellow. And before I move on, I do want to get us to our first what if moment. What if you try to solve this puzzle using set equivalence theory? Because there's a lot of similar candidates. What would that look like? And I'm going to show you that right now. So if you want to solve this using set equivalence theory, and I can tell you Shy is really good about uh, preventing any kind of bypass or intended logic, you may think set will work. And we can kind of look at it a little bit. You go, well, there's a lot of one, two, three, fours, and fives. So maybe if I just did all the lower columns like this and go, yeah, there's a lot of one, twos, and threes, fours, and five. And I colored that, you know, in, in orange. And then I try to look for maybe six, seven, eight, nine. Well, you could go maybe here, you could go maybe there, and you could maybe cut across here. But what you'll find out is to make those happen, you're going to end up eliminating probably more to three, four, and five than you will capture. There's just not enough of the givens of the other type of set, six, seven, eight, nine. And no matter how much you slice this, uh, I'll show this real quick just to kind of make my point. No matter how you slice it, you're just not going to be able to get enough knowns of one set to equal the unknowns of the other set. And, and so if you're curious, you don't understand what I'm talking about with set equivalence theory, because that'd be the other way I would try to approach this. Uh, check out this tutorial where I go through my five-step checklist of figuring out set equivalence theory works for a puzzle. And I'll put a link to it right here. You want to check that out. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies and you will solve Sudoku like this even better. So let's get back to the main solve. After making this breakthrough, Simon starts filling out these yellow cells, right? And so I wonder what we can do with it. And if he notices that in row five, column one, this can now only be a two, four, and eight because it can't be a six or nine because it both it sees both these red cells. And he looks over here and this is a kind of cool moment. You'll notice. Uh, this can't be going to be a one, two, three. It couldn't be a four because it's claiming pair five. Can't be a six any, or a nine anymore or a seven. He realizes this cell can be an eight. And so Simon solves this an eight. He gets real excited. He goes, that's beautiful. He appreciates the logic that Shy put in here to get to this point. And after that, he's able to start solving within block five. Noticing that's a three, that's an eight. And that's a seven. He goes right back to Snyder notation and goes, all right, two spots for seven here in block six. Because this is, Simon's got pretty good uh, discipline here. He knows, okay, yeah, I solved some stuff. I don't see anything immediately. I'm going to go back and use that notation. And he's hopefully this can keep uh, him getting the momentum and seeing where the next solve is. Stay tuned. There's a lot of solving here. And I have a positive video moment coming up. You want to check it out. All right, after putting those sevens in, he, figures out that he can actually solve for a three down here by noticing he got the two threes and this three cutting across. And after solving that three, he goes back to these yellow cells and says, okay, I'm going to finish. Is there anything more with the yellow cells? And you notice there's a one and a three there and there's a one and five there. So nothing with the yellow cells just yet. But then he comes back and goes, okay, what about with the eights? Well, the two eights in columns two and three, there's only one place left for an eight in block one. So he's able to solve that for an eight. And with this eight and the Snyder mark up here, he's able to immediately displace the Snyder and solve for the eight in block three. And then Simon focuses here in block two. You know, he can eliminate that eight. There's only two spaces left for an eight there. And then he also removes this eight from over here in row five, column one. Makes that a by value cell. Looks across the top and goes, okay, there's a six, seven, nine remaining in row one. I got a seven, nine right here. So he solves that cell for a six. After solving that for a six, uh, he marks the seven, nine naked pair remaining in row one. This is nice. And then with the sixes, now he comes down here to block eight and marks 
two spots for a six and block eight. Then he comes over and is like, okay, I got to look for more restriction. He goes over to block one. Notice there's a four, seven, nine, and these sevens end up being a pointing pair because they're limited to column three in block one. You pair up this sevens with this seven. There's only one place left for seven down here in column, excuse me, in block seven. So he solves that for seven. And then Simon comes here and notices this can only be a two, four. And so then you have this naked pair, two, four, six, nine here. You realize that this has to be a six, nine. And this brings us up to our first pause the video moment. Okay, Simon Anthony misses an opportunity to solve two cells down here in block seven at this time. So pause the video and see if you can solve for two cells down here in block seven while I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spot it and you're an expert at noticing what happens when you displace Snyder notation. What Simon could have done since this had a two in it, and the, and the other one can be a two, is he could eliminate the two right there, solve this cell for a two right away, and then this cell for a four. So Simon doesn't see that. Instead, he goes along call, row nine and sees this one, six, nine, and row nine, column nine, they notice there's a seven, nine pair up here in block two. It's like, oh, I can use that to my advantage. Because of the seven, nine, what can this cell be? Well, it can't be a one or a two, it can't be a three, it can't be a four, it can't be a six, it can't be a seven or nine, it can't be an eight. This cell actually has to be a naked single five. So he solves that for the five. After solving that, he puts some fives down here in block eight. Uh, then he kind of finishes up column five and goes, okay, this has got to be a six, seven, nine. After finishing column five, he then looks over and notices that this cell can only be a five, six, or nine. And this creates a naked triple. You see right here, these three cells, five, six, nine, live in the same three spots. So it can't be anywhere else along row eight. And this leads Simon to get some solving done. He notices that now these are a naked pair, one or eight, and this displaces that Snyder five. And so he can get rid of that five and solve for the five in row seven, column four. After solving for the five, it only leaves one place left for seven, in the block so he's able to solve for the seven in row seven column five and then he comes up here and he's able to figure out the seven and nine up there in block two so he solves the nine and the seven up there and then moves on to uh where the nine can be up in row one so he's able to solve for that nine row one column nine works his way down and starts to solve the red cells he knows this is a six and he remembers that hey this is a six this other red cell has to be opposite so he immediately solves that for a nine after he solves that for a nine he solves for six down here and then he notices oh yeah i just displaced that snyder so then he comes back and finally sees the two and the four that he missed earlier that would have made some quicker solving if he had done the two and the four because he could have done some solving up here and moved on a little bit quicker uh, but after that uh, he does move up here and he solves for the four and realizes I got a four and a nine. So this has to be the seven and that has to be the nine to finish off block one. Then he moves himself across. He sees he has these two sevens here and this seven. So there's only one place left for seven in block three. He solves that seven. And then he's able to solve for the six by doing the same thing, noticing that, you know, the six couldn't be any of those two spots. So he could also solve for the six right there. And this six displaces a six down here. So you can solve that for a nine. After solving the nine, he comes back up and he marks this as a one, three pair, gets rid of that three. And then he comes down and goes, okay, I got the six, I got the nine. You know, I know I can solve that for a one, uh, which allows him to solve right column seven for that eight. And then he's able to solve uh, the last cell in block nine for a six. After solving for that six, he goes, okay, what's remaining here in row seven? And it's just an eight. So he marks the eight there. And then he's able to come up here and look at these Snyder notation eights and solve for the eight in row three, column four. After solving that, Simon goes up and sees there's another full house. And you kind of notice you want to work on the big, great restrictions. This is what Simon's doing here, right? So he's going, he's going to either work on the Snyder's, the marks he has, or the greatest restrictions. In this case, he switches over, solves that for one as a naked single. And that displaces the Snyder 4, which displaces that Snyder 2. Looking good here. And now he's able, with the 2 solved, there's only one place left for 2 down here in block 8. So he solves that for the 2. And then he's able to solve 
for the 1 because he'd already solved for the 8 across row 8. After the 1, he solves for the 9 uh, to finish row 9. He moves over here, gets the 7 knocked out because there's only you know one spot left for the 7. And then he's able to get rid of that mark. Solve this for the 5 in row 6, column 9. After solve for the 5, he actually goes over here and makes the smiter marks of the 5s in block 4. But then he comes back and goes, okay, you know, where can the 9 be? I see a 9 right here. There's only one place left for the 9, so he's able to solve that right away, which allows him to displace that Snyder 2, and so he solves for the 2. And Simon's on a roll here. You know, he comes back over and says, okay, I can see these, and you notice there's just less to, to solve because there's less cells to fill in. So he solves the 4, solves the 2, comes back, solves the 4 over there in row 4, column 8, finishes off row 4. After that 4, he puts a 1, 3 in because he can't really solve block 6 right now and comes over here and goes okay i got this nine coming down so i can actually solve for a nine right there and solve for the five to finish off block seven after finish off block seven he kind of follows the fives up and sees a snyder mark so he's able to solve that five right there solve for the three then he comes over and finishes the one and the three over here in block six when he gets those knocked out then he comes back and gets this three and the one up here in block six, excuse me, in block three, then finishes off the one and the six over here in block four, and his last digit is a six. Need to watch this other video if you want to solve Sudoku like this even better. Thank you so much, Shy, for letting me feature your puzzles on this channel, and thank you so much for watching.